Heavenly Father, we thank you for you being the creator God, the all-knowing God, the all-seeing God, and the ever-present God. And we thank you for you being present with us right now. We thank you for your word that never fails and never returns back void. We thank you for the power that is in your word. And we thank you that your word came forth through Jesus to be with us, to be Emmanuel, God on earth. And so we look unto you, Jesus. We turn our hearts to you today, Jesus. We turn our ears to you. We turn our eyes to you, oh God, so that your word will be spoken into our ears and we will see your word and we will receive your word. I step back, oh God, so that you can step up in me that no flesh will glory in your sight. Lord Jesus, you have your way. You lead the way through the message, through our receptivity, oh God, so that we can have all that you desire for us to have. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'll be reading Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the first through the third verses. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. So today I want to talk about a faith. Um, ask yourself, do you have faith? Do we really have faith? And how do we know if we have faith? What really is faith so that we can know if we have it? And what hangs on whether or not we have faith? So today my topic is the invisible seed. Faith prepares the way. So I just want to explain what faith is by dissecting this, our foundation scripture on today. The first verse says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith does not create what we hope for because that would be like mind control and God gives us freedom to choose. Faith is a spiritual perceiving, which is like seeing or a, a spiritual sensing, which is like tasting of the beauty, the sweetness, and the goodness of what God promises us. The things that are not seen, like his fellowship, his, the enjoyment of his presence, the enjoyment of his peace, the receptivity of his love. So Psalms 34 and 8 tells us to old taste and see that the Lord is good. So faith is a spiritual sensing, a seeing or a tasting. Now in verse 3 it says that faith understands that the world which is seen was made out of what was not seen, the word of God. How do we know that God made the world out of nothing that is seen? Not only were we not there when it happened, but even if we were there, we wouldn't be able to see it because it was his words. You can't see the word of God. So how do we know or understand that the world was made by the word of God? How do, can we know that what is seen was made out of invisible things like the word of God? Verse 3 answers it also. Verse 3 says, by faith. By faith we understand that the world, everything we see in every living thing, every living person, animal, creature, or plant was prepared by the word of God. We, see, we understand that by faith. And we are learning this month that the word has the ability to reproduce generation after generation after generation after generation. And we, under, we receive that by faith. And this is what happens when the gospel is preached. When the word of God is spoken, it is broken like bread and it is poured out like a refreshing river of water. Then the spiritual taste of our hearts are awakened by faith. And we know that there is more than just an opinion of a man or a woman, whoever is speaking. That's why it's so important for us to speak the word even when we are at home memorizing our scriptures, to speak it out. Don't just say it to yourself, speak it out. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we have to continually to hear the word when it's preached in church, even when we're at home. 
So in summary, faith is a kind of spiritual tasting of what God has promised so that we can feel the large, deep, significant guarantee of the things that we hope for. Faith is also a kind of spiritual sensing of the invisible fingerprints or footprints of God in the things that he has made. So first, we believe God's power and wisdom to make us because we are here. We can see that. We believe that God has made us. Then we are to believe his goodness and grace to save us. So faith is important because the Bible tells us that without faith, we cannot please God. So I want to tell about how faith prepares the way. Faith makes room for the living and active seed, the word of God. Faith prepares the way. So Romans 10 and 17 says, again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It does not faith come say that faith comes by reading. It doesn't say that faith comes by a preacher. Faith comes by hearing God. The Holy Spirit is the person of the Trinity who speaks the word into our hearts and causes the, our faith to come alive. The Holy Spirit does. So the word goes out, the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts, and it makes room. An example of this is in Genesis, the first chapter, when the earth was without form and dark, first the, whole, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. First, the Holy Spirit made room. Then God said, the Spirit of God made room, and then God said so that it could be received. Faith by the Holy Spirit prepared the way for the word of God to come alive and to manifest. So why does the Holy Spirit have to use faith to prepare the way for the seed of God's word? We are look at the uh, parable of the sower that Jesus mentioned in Matthew the chapter 13. And we have, Apostle has talked about it in our services. So the parable shows us that there are multiple improper grounds that the seed can be sowed on. But there is only one good ground for the seed to be sowed into and actually produce a healthy, abundant harvest. So we can have multiple grounds, we can have multiple attitudes, but there's only one posture that produces what God word is supposed to produce and continue to reproduce because it produced a full harvest, a plentiful harvest. So to briefly go over the grounds one more time, there's a ground that the seed can't grow on top of the ground because it's hard. So naturally the birds will eat it and spiritually the enemy will snatch up the word. Second, the seed can't grow on the rocky ground because although we receive it with joy, there are no roots and it is short-lived. So naturally, when the sun comes up, it burns the plant. Spiritually, then when the trouble or persecution that comes because of the word, because it's going to come. Because the word of God has been attacked. So that when the trouble or persecution that comes because of the word, people tend to give up. The third wrong ground is the seed can't grow in a thorny ground because, naturally speaking, the plant that was supposed to produce um, perseverance turned into the worries of this life and the blessings that turned into deceitfulness of wealth choked the word out of people. So with the thorns, the seed went in the ground, the, pro the product was supposed to grow, but it but turned into a, a weed because it got distorted. It turned into a weed and then so it started attacking the little piece of God that we wanted because we got frustrated, the cares of life. We started getting blessed and then we started thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. We allow the worries of life to, to choke us out. But it was all supposed to be the plant that God wanted us to have. The last ground, the good ground, the one posture, the seed that grew in good soil, heard, understood, and produced the full harvest of the fruit of the Spirit. While planting most natural crops, we had to dig a little hole in the to put it in the, the seed in. Like when we were in YGS and we made our little plants, I said, okay, you can't just pour the seed on top because that's the same ground. 
The first one, the hard ground. So get your finger and dig a little hole, dig a little hole, pour the seed in, then cover the seed with some more ground. So we had to cover the seed, the word of God, with our heart. So um, by hearing the word, faith, as we previously talked about in Hebrews 11, awakens our hearts and make room for the seed to be planted in our hearts. So by hearing the word, faith awakens our hearts and makes room for the seed to be planted in our hearts. Can you imagine a seed going in the ground that is full of faith, that anticipated that seed going in? How much do you feel like that will grow? Faith makes sure that everything within the ground not only makes room for it, but it nurtures it, it protects it so that that seed can grow. Apostle told us the ground has what it needs. Once the seed goes in, if it's good ground, everything going to go to the ground. Every, the ground going to make sure the seed get packed, it stay compact, it stay in that ground. It, even as it starts to grow, when the roots are forming, the ground going to move out of the way because our faith is already in the ground. So I want to ask you all, so if the ground is that important for the, and the seed is even more important, how do you think that the people the, before Jesus came, how, how were their ground before the seed of God came? So I want to talk about the lost years. The last prophet of the Old Testament was Malachi. 200 years before Malachi, the prophet Amos prophesied in Amos 8 and 11 that the Lord will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Many scholars have believed that this was punishment for the Jews' sin, as well as mocking the prophets. We see throughout the Old Testament that many prophets um, were um, outcasts. They were trying to shut the prophet up. Prophets had their heads cut off because people didn't want to hear what the Lord said. The prophet has the words of the Lord. And the people of God, even though they had the scribes and um, the law, they needed a prophet to interpret that law, to teach it, to enforce it, to remind them of the law, to tell them what God says when it was a warning. So hearing is important. So during the 500-year gap from the Old Testament when Malachi came and the New Testament, there were major consequences that resulted because people attempted to understand the law and live the law from their own minds, doing things our own way, on our own time, and whatever we felt were best. That's why it's important for us to have a church, to hear the word so that we all can, it can be broken down. The Holy Spirit can tell our pastor, our apostle, what the word of God wants us to know for this. Because we've, we've seen apostle pull one message. She preached the same um, passage, but she had different messages for every passage. And that go for whatever season we are in, whatever God wants to tell us. So the ground of the Jews' hearts during that 500-year gap were separated more and more, and their grounds became more and more unfruitful because they did not have a genuine prophetic voice of authoritative teachings and interpretation. And this formed a lot of disorder and chaos. People divided into parties and groups and different segments of the religion because they had their own interpretation. It wasn't, like Apostle has said before, anything with more than one head is a monster. And people were claiming the right to interpret the scriptures on their own and lead different groups of people, whatever you felt like was best, and who going to be over here with me, and we going to do things this way. And most of all, the true understanding of Jehovah God weakened among these groups. So there were multiple um, thought processes. Some Jews debated the meaning of the scriptures about who the Messiah would be. Some people waited for the descendant from King David to be the Messiah. Some other people even thought that the Messiah was going to come from a son of Aaron. Is that is not what the prophets before had said. Other people just stopped expecting the Messiah to come all together. They lost their faith. 
So many expectations had built up among the different groups during this period that the groups did not know how to recognize the true Messiah when he would come. They became blinded. And it even became death. So God had to make a big distinction during the next phase that the Holy Spirit would have to make room for the invisible seed that was going to come forth. And he was going to make room by faith preparing the way. This period ended when God sent a new prophet. After 500 years, the children of Israel did not have a prophet to speak to them. And a new prophet God sent, and his name was John the Baptist. And he was um, made to prepare a new dispensation. A dispensation of the gospel is a period of time in which the Lord has at least one authorized servant on earth who bears the holy priesthood and keys. And he has a divine commission to dispense the gospel to the inhabitants of the earth. John the Baptist had this responsibility. He was going to be the new prophet. His conception and birth announcement had to be announced because it had been 500 years since a prophet had been um, for the Jews and his birth and announcement had to be announced. It had to be documented in the Bible. The Bible talks about John. Many of the gospels talk about John before they talk about Jesus. To be, um, his birth had to be documented because he was the next prophet and he had to prepare the way for Emmanuel, God with us. Now let's turn to Luke, the first chapter, and we're going to tell about how faith prepared the way even in his mother's womb. That is Luke chapter 1, the 13th verse. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall receive at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Verse 16, And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. 17, And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John the Baptist's purpose was to prepare the people for the seed. There were very specific requirements as we just read for this faith preparer. John's father, Zacharias, being a priest, he understood the order, the rituals, the law, and he understood holiness. So he knew how to be taught all of these things so he could also know how to teach his son. John's mother, Elizabeth, it says that she was a daughter of Aaron's lineage. Aaron, Aaron was a priest. So she understood holiness and how to, to train up and raise a holy man and also take care of a holy man because her husband was a priest. John was instructed to never be permitted to drink. Not only did his parents have to teach him this, but he had to choose not to drink and to follow what the prophecy said over his life. He would be filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb. And his ultimate responsibility was to turn people's heart back to God and the disobedient to wisdom. All of that to have faith make room for the seed, Jesus. So we're going to go down to Luke chapter 1, the 18th verse. And Zacharias said unto the angel, 
Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and show, to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be formed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Now, many people give their explanation and their opinions on why Zacchaeus was muted after his question, but Mary wasn't muted when um, she asked her question. But I believe that the level of faith that was necessary to prepare the way for Jesus had to be so secure that the angel muted Zacchaeus' mouth because the word could not wait. Because we know that God is fueled by faith. And the devil is fueled by fear. And because he was going to make the way for the seed, his purpose was so important. I can't even take you saying anything negative on him, over him, while he's even in your, your wife's womb. Because he would be that important. Because the time is now. Jesus is on his way. This is the time that God wanted Jesus to come into the earth, but somebody had to prepare the way, prepare the people so that somebody will receive Jesus, receive the seed. And the word couldn't afford anything, anyone, any negative word, no spirit of doubt to be spoken over this next prophet because he was going to prepare the way. And likewise, when God give us plans, when God give us goals, when God give us promises, we can't allow people to speak negative words. We even can't speak negative words over no spirit of doubt. If you just got to close your mouth, God, I thank you and keep it moving so that that promise can come forth. You won't be held back. Hallelujah. That was the time for alignment. That was the time for the manifestation of the word through the past prophets, even like Isaiah. Faith makes room for the seed. And the word of God will do the impossible. Now, when we go down to Luke chapter 1, on the 30th verse, we'll see how faith prepared the way even for Mary. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. So just like with Zacharias, the angel spoke what was going to happen. And even spoke his, his responsibility or purpose. And he shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So verse 34, then Mary said unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I am not a man? I know not a man. And 35, the angel answered, releasing the seed to hover over her ground and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So he released the seed to hover over her. Verse 36, and behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month which with her who was called barren. The faith already making the room. I'm going to tell you what we all, God already did. The faith already preparing the way for her to receive the seed. 37, for God, with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary, receiving in faith the substance of things that are hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, she received it in faith, said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. The angel didn't have to say anymore because the seed already went in the ground. It was already done because faith prepared the way. Faith opened up her ground. She opened up her ground through faith. Well, if it happened to my cousin Elizabeth, okay, because she was barren and she older. So if it can happen to her, it can happen for me that I'm a virgin. 
Because the word of the Lord says so. And with God, nothing is impossible. So she received the seed by her faith. The seed is hovering, hovering over all our grounds. So our faith has to make room for the seed. Other examples of miracles where one's faith has made room for their healing. Um, in Matthew chapter 9, the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Luke chapter 17, the, t the 10 lepers, they were healed by faith. Mark chapter 10, the blind Bartimaeus was healed by faith. The royal official's daughter in John 4 chapter, he believed the word of Jesus and his daughter was healed. There is a time to manifest the invisible seed. Can you imagine how spiritually hungry those Jews who did stick to the true word of the Lord, the word of the prophet, who remained faithful to God during those 500 years? Do you imagine how hungry their ground was? God, I, we haven't had a prophet in 500 years. Like, I know a prophet got to be coming, like, every year in anticipation. I know a prophet got to be coming to direct us. The Messiah has got to be coming. They had to be realigned and refocused by the Spirit through faith of the ministry of John the Baptist. So I want you to turn to Mark, the first chapter, and we're going to read about the ministry of John the Baptist and how faith prepared the way as they both started their ministry. Faith prepares our hearts, our grounds to receive the word. So Mark... The first chapter in all four Gospels have a vantage point of um, John the Baptist and the beginning of his ministry. But I decided to choose this one because it was more condensed so you can see what I'm saying. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark chapter 1 verse 1 the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ the son of God as it is written in the prophets behold I send my messenger before thy faith which shall prepare thy way before thee the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his path straight John did not baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Skip to verse 7. And he preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway come up, up out of the water, he saw the heavens open, and the spirit like a dove descended upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in who I am and well pleased. And immediately the spirit drove him into the wilderness. Immediately after John had prepared the way, it was destined for Jesus to be uh, baptized by John to begin his ministry. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now, after John was put in prison, after faith had prepared the way, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Faith had to prepare the way. Before Jesus, the seed started sowing. Hallelujah. Faith prepared the way for the seed. Faith also leads to repentance. So how faith prepares the way? Faith leads to repentance. As John the Baptist, he cried out, verse 3, 
The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Repentance is confessing of our sins and turning away from our old ways of life. In this instance, he was telling them, turn away from those old thinking, all those separate groups, all those separate grounds. We need one ground so we can receive this seed because this seed is bigger than me. Y'all think I'm him, but I'm directing y'all back to the seed. Faith going to prepare the way. Faith going to direct you appropriately to the true seed. The baptism of John was an outward cleansing to represent an inward cleansing. We hear you, John. Those of us who want to hear, we hear you. And we're going to prepare our ground so that that seed can manifest. All of this was in preparation of Jesus, the true seed. So why does David pray in Psalm 51 and 17 for a broken and contrite heart that God won't despise it? Because a broken heart is a repenting heart pliable ground it has softened it has made room for God's seed his word to be planted in us so that we can produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit repentance shall always go along with our faith to produce more faith we have to keep what repentance we can't just have all this faith and we not being cleansed what is going to go in that ground what is our faith going to operate off of we have to have clean hearts and how do we increase our faith? In Luke, the 17th chapter, um, the 5th through the 6th verse, the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this tree, be picked up by the root and be planted in the seed, and it will obey you. As being disciples of Christ ourselves, we shall want our faith to increase. But how do we go about that? How can we increase our faith? We can't. In the passage to whom it is that the disciples are asking to increase their faith. They are asking the Lord Jesus himself. So we do not increase our own faith. The Lord who gives us faith is the one who increases our faith. But like they did, we have to ask for it. And when we ask for it in his name, he is faithful and just to give it to us. And when we recall on his goodness, we will increase our, our faith will be increased. Did you know that in the King James Version, the word faith was only used twice in the Old Testament? And in the King James Version, the word faith appears 336 times. Even though Hebrews, the 11th chapter, lists all of these faith heroes and heroines that are from the Old Testament, they operated out of faith, but it was never called faith because the seed Jesus had not arrived. Once the seed Jesus came, then we have faith in Jesus Christ. Everything we do is faith in Jesus Christ. So according to Hebrews 12 and 2, we must fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith so faith without works is dead that's what it says in, in um, James 2 and 14 faith is like a muscle it grows stronger as it is stressed when our faith is tested when it is tried when it is stretched it is being expanded for greater capacity now, Romans 5, 3 through 5 says, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It has been given to us. And we also know hope is like believing. And believing is our faith. So when we are pressed, pressed, we are stretched, we are tested, it is to produce more and more faith. It's not to give up. It's to stretch our faith. Okay, God. Okay, you brought me out of this. I know you could do this again. Okay, God, if I'm going through all these tests back, I know a miracle is coming out on the other side of this. So I'm going to increase my faith. I'm not going to back up. In James 2, uh, 14, it talks about how faith without works is dead. Now, it was, in the context, it was like, uh, show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my, my faith by my works. 
So it was like a comparison. But it also mentions that even demons have faith. Even demons believe. But when, and so when we work hard for something, what is the drive and the motivation behind our work that we're going to expect to receive it? We have faith in what we're doing. Faith and action work together. You can't have a successful faith without successful action. Abraham had to do it. He, is the, he was titled the father of faith because when God told him to sacrifice his son, the promised son, Okay. And he had, he didn't could have just said, okay, God told me to sacrifice my son. Okay, God, you're going to do it and never move. He had to actually go up there and well, God, this must be what you want me to do. He was about to do it and God made a way. His faith and his actions had to work together to increase his faith. Even like with the... Um, the prophet and the widow woman with the oil and the cake. The word went out, bake me a cake first. And what? He ain't said nothing. Just bake me a cake first. So it's like, okay. <laughs> and she was like, mmm. <laughs> and she sat on it. Because we about to die. I want to die sooner. You know, so, uh, but she, her works and her faith made it happen that the oil kept pouring, the oil kept pouring, the oil kept pouring. Now, while faith should do four things, our faith should first speak in prayer. We have to pray in faith, pray for faith, pray through in faith. Second, our faith believes that we have it. I already have it. It's already done. And I believe it. Third, our faith gives things while waiting. So while we're waiting, like we sow our seed. In faith, I'm going to sow my seed. In faith, I'm going to sow obedience to your word. In faith, I'm going to sow obedience to your principles. In faith, I'm going to keep running my ways. And lastly, by faith, um, our speech should not nullify or reverse what we are asking God for. So we should continue to praise God, continue to thank God. Thank you, oh God, that you are the one who does wonders. You are the one who does miracles, even when we don't see it, because faith is the evidence of things hoped for, not seen. Take God at his word. Trust in his character. That's how we're going to build our faith, knowing and believing who he is and how he revealed himself to us. And we have to live it out every day. Recall of his goodness, like in the Old Testament, there were elders set aside just to retell the stories of how God opened the sea, the Red Sea, how God made a way, how God helped them win this battle, how God helped them do this. And it was their responsibility to teach the younger children. And that's why even a lot of us, if our older um, individuals in our family, they share some of the stories. And like, okay, we heard this one. We heard it before. But it's to build our faith, build our expectancy. expectancy. Even with Black History Month, um, telling about even some of the same things. It's like, okay, we, we heard about Martin Luther King, like, a lot. We heard about Rosa Parks. But it's to build our faith. It's to build our faith. I can do all things through Christ. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am beautiful. I am strong. I am intelligent. I am smart. You know, I can do this. I can do anything that God creates me to do. And we have to recall on God's faithfulness, like David says in Psalms. I recall of your faithfulness. I recall of your goodness. I recall of it, God. I'm a, I'm a write it down. That's why God told us to write our seed down. So that when the seed grows, we have documentation even for ourselves. And then we can even share it with other people. And that's the benefit of us not forsaking, assembling ourselves together, having a church body. And you look like you're going through, brother. You look like you're going through, sister. But can I remind you of what God done for you so I can help build your faith? I can build your faith up and you build up mine. And we just encourage the other what God has done for our other brother or sister in the ministry or even the other testimonies of people not members of our church church that apostle shares we build up um we allow the holy spirit to build our faith by recalling on the goodness of god even through the word of god you are able to bring me out you are my strong tower you are my strength you are my joy so i take refuge in you 
So my last question today I want to ask you is, do we have enough faith to make room for our deliverance, our healing, our blessing? Do we have faith that makes room on our families, faith that makes room in our jobs, faith that makes rooms in our community, room for God's word to come in? Do we have enough faith? And if each one of us pray and ask God to increase our faith and actively work with it and our works complement our faith. Can you imagine how much faith this church can have for the impossible if we all come together in unity? So as you stand, I encourage everyone today to allow the Holy Spirit to make room in you. Through faith, so that the word of God, the words that's spoken over your life, the blessings that God, even the visions that God has shown you that for you to have and receive so that you can have it. I encourage everybody to ask God for faith, increase your faith, recall on his goodness, recall on the past things that he has done for you, even things that he has done for someone else. Oh, God, you healed them. You can heal me. Even if it's somebody that we don't even know, but we know God is able. We know God that is faithful. We know his word never returns back to him void. So we can always pull on those scriptures that reassure us and reconfirm his word in our hearts. So is there anyone today that have not accepted Jesus but want to take an act of faith, that want to take a step of faith into the kingdom of God, that want to trust God at his word, that this faith have made room for you to choose Jesus today? If you would like to accept Jesus in your heart, in your whole life, if you would come forward at this time and we'll walk you through the repentance prayer as you start your new life in faith with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God today for us having faith and God speaking a word into our ear, into our spirit, to till our ground so that his seed can go deeper in it, oh God, and that we can produce a harvest. Hallelujah. I thank you all. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit making room and preparing the way for your word through our ears, through our eyes and our heart, oh God, so that we can receive your word with gladness. And we ask, oh God, that you would increase our faith this day. Increase our faith for the impossible. Increase our faith for every healing, deliverance, and blessing that you want to give us because your word tells us that you want to. So God, we thank you in advance. As we prepare for our consecration, a day of thanksgiving and reflection, we reflect on your goodness. We reflect on your greatness. We re reflect on every way that you have made. And we thank you, oh God. We thank you for what you did then. And we thank you for what you're doing now. And we thank you for what you're going to do. So we have a heart of thanksgiving. So lead us this day, oh God. As we leave this place, but never your presence. Continue to cover us with your blood. Continue to let faith make the way for us, even as we travel home, oh God, that we are always receive your love, your protection, and your peace. In Jesus' name, as for me, at my, my house, we will, we will serve the Lord. You are dismissed. Hallelujah.